Playing with Power MTG is supported by Flipside Gaming. When you use the promo code POWER in all caps, you get 10% off orders $10 or more. It saves you money and helps us out at the same time. Also, if you use our promo code from July 8th through August 16th, you'll automatically get entered into a drawing to win a set of all four of the new Commander 2019 decks. Check out the link in the description below for more information. Finally, consider supporting us on Patreon. You'll get early access to videos and many more perks. Check out the links in the description below and subscribe today. Thanks! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats, and tonight's episode is going to show you exactly what that means. Welcome to our Patreon special. When we asked our Patreons what they wanted for their Patreon video, the answer was clear. A game of CEDH with no band list restriction. So we got to brewing, and tonight you get to see what CEDH looks like in a no-holds-barred all-out fight. Let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. I wanted to add that I will not be revealing what the main goal of each deck is beforehand in this video, because I want that to be a surprise as the game unfolds. First, we have Mike piloting the four-color pairing of Timna the Weaver and Thrasios Triton Hero. Mike's opening hand consists of a Watery Grave, Underground River, Windswept Heath, Enlightened Tutor, Pact of Negation, Mana Drain, and a Carpet of Flowers. Next, we have Adam, highlighting Derevi, Imperial Tactician. His opening hand consists of a Misty Rainforest, Wooded Foothills, Tundra, Balance, Mox Pearl, Time Vault, and a Static Orb. After that, we have Garrett, highlighting Sidisi, Brood Tyrant. His opening hand consists of a Sylvan Library, Lotus Petal, Flash, Mogus's Marauder, Watery Grave, Ponder, and a Bayou. Finally, we have Folger piloting Anala, Archmage Ritualist. His opening hand consists of a Dak Faden, Demonic Tutor, Toxic Deluge, Rapid Hybridization, Mystical Tutor, Underground River, and a Watery Grave. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Adam wins a Shaharazad Magic Subgame and gets to start us off. Adam plays a Wooded Foothills for turn. He cracks it for a Tropical Island. He casts a Mox Pearl. He follows up with a Time Vault. Everyone suddenly worries if this game is going to be over in one turn, and Adam passes. Folger starts off by casting a Mox Jet. He plays an Underground River. He casts a Demonic Tutor. He searches up a card into his hand, and then gives the turn to Garrett. Garrett plays a Bayou for turn. He casts a Lotus Petal. He cracks his Lotus Petal and casts Sylvan Library. He shifts the turn to Mike. Mike starts off by casting a Mox Emerald. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He also plays an Underground River. He moves to a second main phase and adds one white through his Carpet of Flowers, and uses that mana to cast Enlightened Tutor. He fetches up a Mystic Remora to the top of his library, and then passes the turn. Adam starts his turn by casting Balance. Balance resolves and everyone discards their hand down to four. He plays a Bountiful Promenade for turn, and passes. Folger plays a Command Tower for turn. He taps his Underground River for blue to help cast Dak Faden. Everyone realizes what an amazing card this is in a no ban list game, and Adam groans heavily. Dak resolves, and Folger immediately activates it and gains control of Adam's time ball. With nothing else, Folger gives a turn to Garrett. During his draw step, Garrett draws an extra two through a Sylvan Library and pays eight life to keep them both. He plays a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Carpet of Flowers of his own. He casts a Ponder. He looks at the top three, decides to shuffle, and then draws a card. He moves to his second main phase and adds a green through his Carpet of Flowers. He casts a Green Sun Zenith for zero. He fetches up a Dryad Arbor onto the battlefield and then shuffles Green Suns back into his library. Garrett passes the turn. In his first main phase, Mike adds a blue through his Carpet of Flowers. He plays a Windswept Heath for turn. He casts Mystic Remora. He passes. Adam plays a Tundra for turn. He casts a Black Lotus. He sacks his Lotus for 3 blue. He casts Static Orb. In response, Mike cracks his Windswept Teeth and fetches up a Tundra. He taps his Underground River for blue to help cast Mana Drain. With that, Static Orb is countered, and Adam passes the turn. Folger starts off his turn by activating Dak Faden, drawing 2 and discarding 2. He plays an Arid Mesa for turn, and passes. 
In his draw step, Garrett draws an additional two cards and pays eight life to keep them both. In his first main phase, he adds two black through his carpet of flowers. He plays the Sunken Ruins for turn. He casts his commander, Sidisi, Brood Tyrant. Sidisi enters and Garrett mills three, including a Protean Hulk and creating a 2-2 zombie. He casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing the zombie. He fetches up a card into his hand and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mike pays for his Mr. Grimora. In his first main phase, he adds two blue through his carpet. He plays a Wooded Foothills for turn. He casts Talisman of Dominance. He cracks his Wooded Foothills for a tropical island. He follows up by casting his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He ends his turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Adam activates Derevi's ability, putting him onto the battlefield from the command zone and tapping down Folger's command tower. Adam begins his turn by casting Edric, Spymaster of Trest. He attacks Garrett with his Derevi. Garrett declares no blocks, takes two, and Derevi and Edric triggers. Adam untaps his Chandra and draws a card. In his second main phase, he plays a Flooded Strand for turn. He cracks it for a Temple Garden into play tapped. He falls up by casting Kataki, War's Wage. With everyone's fun mox plans thwarted, Adam ends his turn. At the end of Adam's turn, Folger cracks his Arid Mesa for a Steam Vents into play tapped. During Folger's upkeep, Kataki's ability triggers on his artifacts. Folger plays for his Mox Jet with his Mox Jet and lets the Time Vault die. Folger starts off his turn by casting Ancestral Recall, drawing three cards. He activates Stack Faden, gaining control of Mike's Talisman. In response, Mike taps it and pays a life to add a blue to his mana pool. He plays a Polluted Delta for turn and passes. During his draw step, Garrett draws two extra cards through Sylvan Library and pays eight life to keep them both. In his main phase, he adds three blue through his carpet. He casts a Black Lotus. He follows up with a Laboratory Maniac. He cracks his Black Lotus for three blue. He casts Time Walk. He then follows up with Mogus's Marauder. Marauder enters and he targets Labman and the Marauder itself. He attacks Folger with everything, including Dryad Arbor. Sidisi's attack trigger fires and Garrett mills three cards and creates a 2-2 zombie. In response, Folger cracks his Polluted Delta for an island. Not wanting Garrett to draw a lot of cards through Edric, Folger casts Rapid Hybridization, targeting Adam's Edric. Edric gets destroyed, and Adam gets a 3-3 Frog Lizard. Folger declares no blocks and takes the damage. In his second main phase, Garrett plays a Misty Rainforest for turn. He cracks it for an Underground Sea. He passes the turn to, well, himself. During his draw step of his extra turn, Garrett draws two extra cards and pays four life to keep one of them. In his main phase, he adds three blue through his carpet. He plays a Polluted Delta for turn. He casts a Skull Clamp. He then casts Windfall. Mike, really liking the hand he's assembled through Mystic Remora, responds by casting Flusterstorm. Garrett responds by casting his own Flusterstorm, targeting Mike's. Each copy targets one of the other Flusterstorm copies in a real mess on the stack. Mike's Storm of Flusters gets countered. With Windfall still on the stack, Folger responds by discarding Fairy Macabre, exiling Protean Hulk and Channeler Initiate from Garrett's graveyard. Then Windfall finally resolves Everyone discards their hand and draws 8 cards. Garrett activates Skull Clamp, attaching it to Dryad Arbor, killing it, and drawing 2 cards. He casts a Demonic Tutor for turn. He attacks Folger with Sidisi. Sidisi's trigger resolves, and Garrett mills 3 and creates a 2-2 zombie. Folger takes the damage, and Garrett ends his turn. During his upkeep, Mike pays for his artifacts from Kataki and pays for his Mystic Remora. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Overgrown Tomb. He casts a Preordain. He scries two, keeping one on top, and draws a card. He plays a Spire of Industry. He casts a Mana Crypt. He taps his underground river for a black and casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He attacks Folger for one. In his second main phase, he adds two blue through his carpet. He casts his own copy of Windfall. The guys on the other side of the table wonder if they're ever gonna actually get to play the cards they see in their hand and Garrett responds by cracking his Polluted Delta for a Tropical Island. He casts Noxious Revival, targeting his Time Walk. Mike responds by casting Swan Song, targeting the Revival. Revival is countered, and Garrett gets a Swan. With Windfall still in the stack, Folger casts Pongify, targeting Garrett's Lab Man. Pongify resolves, and Garrett gets a 3-3-8. The Windfall resolves, everyone discards their hand again, and draws eight. Mike plays a Mox Sapphire for turn, and passes. During his upkeep, Adam pays for his Mox Pearl with his Mox Pearl from Kotaki. 
In his main phase, he casts Loyal Retainers. He sacrifices the Retainers to return Edric from his graveyard to the battlefield. He attacks Folger with Kataki, Garrett with Derevi, and Mike with his 3-3 Frog Lizard. Garrett jump blocks with his Bird, and the other two take the damage. Edric and Derevi trigger, and Adam draws two cards and untaps two lands. In his second main phase, he plays a Caracas. He follows up with a Root Maze. He then casts Sphere of Resistance. In response, Mike casts a Mystical Tutor, fetching up a Force of Will onto the top of his library. With nothing else, and the Sphere resolving, Adam gives the turn to Folger. During his upkeep, Folger pays for his Mana Rocks with his Mana Rocks from Kataki. He plays an Island for turn. He pays an additional one to cast Mox Diamond. Mox Diamond resolves, Folger discards an Island, and it enters the battlefield tapped through Root Maze. Everyone talks about the extra field bads that come from that play. Folger agrees, and then passes the turn to Garrett. During his upkeep, Garrett lets his Skull Clamp die through Kataki. In his draw step, he draws two extra through Sylvan Library, pays no life, and puts two back on top. In his first main phase, he has three blue through his carpet. He casts Eternal Witness. Witness enters, and Garrett returns Time Walk to his hand. He plays a Cephalid Coliseum. He attacks Folger with two zombies and his Sidisi. Sidisi triggers, and he mills a Wall of Roots, Elvish Mystic, and an Arc Amoeba. Dark Amoeba triggers, and he puts it onto the battlefield. Sidisi's trigger resolves, and he gets a 2-2 zombie. Folger declares no blocks. Before the damage is dealt, and Garrett draws a bunch of cards, Adam activates his Caracas to return Edric back to his hand. In his second main phase, Garrett pays two to cast Mox Sapphire and Mox Jet. The Moxen resolve and enter the battlefield tap. Garrett ends his turn. During his upkeep, Mike lets his Mystic Remora die. He pays for his rocks with his rocks, leaving up Mox Diamond. He also loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. In his main phase, he casts Dark Ritual, adding three black to his mana pool. He casts Tezzeret the Seeker. Tezzeret resolves and he activates him, untapping Mox Sapphire and Mana Crypt. He casts Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He casts Ancestral Recall, drawing three cards. He plays a Command Tower for turn. He moves to his end step and discards down to hand size. During his upkeep, Adam pays for his artifacts from Kataki. He plays an Exotic Orchard for turn. He recasts Edric. He attacks Folger with Kataki, Garrett with Derevi, and Mike with his Frizzard. Garrett blocks Derevi with his Narc Amoeba. The other two declare no blocks, and Adam's Derevi and Edric triggers. Adam untaps Caracas and Exotic Orchard and draws two cards. He moves to his end step and discards down to hand size. During his upkeep, Folger pays for his rocks with his rocks from Kataki. He looks at his hand, glares hatefully at the Sphere of Resistance, and passes the turn. At the end of Folger's turn, Garrett casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. During his upkeep, Garrett pays for his Moxen with his Moxen from Kataki. He draws three through his Sylvan Library and puts two back on top. In his main phase, he has three blue through his carpet. He casts Time Walk. Mike responds by casting Force of Will, exiling a blue card, paying one life, and paying one mana through Sphere of Resistance. Garrett responds by casting Pact of Negation, also paying an additional one. Force is countered, and Time Walk resolves. Garrett casts an Apprentice Necromancer. He decides that he has the ability to take out Folger, so he attacks him with everything. Garrett Sidisi triggers, and he mills three, creating a 2-2 zombie. Folger, staring down lethal, begins to bargain with Adam. He asks Adam to bounce Sidisi, and in return, he will deal with the creature threat on Garrett's board. With Adam neither confirming nor denying whether or not he will bounce Sidisi, Folger decides to cast Fire Covenant, paying 13 life and wiping the board of Garrett's attacking creatures except Sidisi. Folger then looks at Adam to see what he will do. In true form, Adam activates Caracas, bouncing Sidisi back to Garrett's hand. With Folger barely alive, Garrett moves to his second main phase. In his second main, Garrett taps his Colosseum to cast Mystical Tutor, fetching up a Nature's Claim onto the top of his library. With nothing else, he passes the turn to, well, himself again. During his upkeep, Garrett taps his Moxen to help pay for his Pact of Negation trigger. He then lets his Moxen die through Kataki. He draws three with a Sylvan Library and puts two back on top. In his main phase, he has three blue through his carpet. He recasts Sidisi. Sidisi enters, its ETB triggers, Garrett mills three, and creates a 2-2 zombie. He plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. He attacks Folger with a zombie, killing him. 
All but spent, he passes the turn to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He uses his rocks to pay for his rocks through Kataki. In his main phase, he has 3 blue through his carpet. He casts Time Walk. He activates Tezzeret, searching his library for an artifact onto the battlefield, which is a Time Vault. He casts Regrowth, targeting Yawgmoth's will in its graveyard. With nothing else, he passes the turn to himself. During the upkeep of Mike's extra turn, he loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He pays for his artifacts with his rocks for Kataki. In his main phase, he has 3 blue through his carpet. He activates Tezzeret, untapping Time Vault and Mana Crypt. He taps his Time Vault to take an extra turn. He begins a loop where he takes infinite turns with Tezzeret and Time Vault. He eventually digs out his win conditions from his library and graveyard, which consists of a Paradox Engine, Isochron Scepter imprinted with Dramatic Reversal, a copy artifact as a copy of Isochron Scepter imprinted with Swan Song. He casts Dramatic Reversal through the Scepter, then counters it through Swan Song using the Paradox Engine for infinite untaps and gaining infinite swans and infinite turns, he attacks his opponents till they are dead. Ladies and gentlemen, holy smokes, what a game. I don't even know where to begin. This game was an absolute blast to play. Congratulations to Mike on his victory. He played through all kinds of different disruptions, cast his spells with impeccable timing, and got his win through well-executed gameplay. Adam had some really cool and really spicy plays and showed why some cards are very overpowered in our format. Folger was packing some really cool tech in his Anala deck and unfortunately wasn't able to get ahead before everyone attacked him to get the Edric triggers. Garrett was getting some really great value off of his deck, but the stacks pieces proved to be more of a burden than he had originally anticipated. The player of the game goes to Adam. He was aiming for a turn 2 or 3 win with his time vault, and then when his plans were disrupted, he was able to stack the board down to a much more manageable level. The most valuable card of the game was Time Walk. It was the main target for searches, counters, removal, and recursion. Literally everyone ran it in their decks. It is a 2 CMC spell that can completely flip the game in your favor in literally a turn. There is no doubt in anyone's mind why this card is banned. We wanted to thank all of our Patreons that made this video possible. We cannot thank you enough for your support. If you want to become a Patreon, check the link in the description below. We have multiple tiers and any amount makes a major impact. A special shout out to the ones who helped Adam with his brew, including Graham, Zach, and Kevin. You know who you are. As well as Pongo from Team Turn 3. Team Turn 3 is a channel who provides competitive paper gameplay, much like us, and we recommend you check out their channel. The link is in the description below. Also, if you like this content, please give this video a like, comment with your thoughts, and consider subscribing for more great gameplay. That about wraps it up for our Patreon special. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.